Right, I mean, you could do some, you could start something for money and make money at it, uh, whatever. I mean, that's what any job is. Go work at a right. restaurant or whatever you want to do and make some money. Easy, right. easy. Um, but if you want this to, like for me, I wanted to invest more time in my hobby. And so to do that, I wanted to be able to pay for more of my materials on my own, separate yeah. from my full-time job. My full-time job helps me pay for my house, my kids, my everything else, but I wanted to kind of be self-sustaining in my hobby. Yeah. So it started off that way and I just kind of worked my way into it. Hello and welcome to Around Town Carroll County, the show about entrepreneurs doing wonderful things right here in our own county and how you too can build a thriving business and live out your own dreams instead of being paid to build someone else's. I'm your host, Adam Stoltz, owner of Digital Consulting LLC, a company focused on video marketing and content creation for your business, making your complex video projects simple. If you like what you see in here today, please be sure to subscribe, like, share, leave a five-star rating. You can also donate to our calls right on our homepage at aroundtowncc.com. We can't thank you enough in advance for your support. My guest today is the Solaris Workmanship Award from Tenacon in 2021, the Hoku Props Judges' Choice for the UOCC in 2021. She was first place in the uh, Special Effects TwitchCon 2020, first place Masterclass at Anime Magic in 2020, a Masterclass finalist for the UOCC in 2020, first place Armor for the New York Comic Con in 2019, first place at Gettysburg Link Con, and first place amateur at the Baltimore Comic Con. If you could please help me welcome to the show, owner of Plexi Cosplay, Miss Candice Berger. Candice. Hi, thanks for having me. Of course, <laughs> thanks for being with us. So uh, I don't know how people could know, but for those that don't know, what is cosplay? So let's start there. Sure. So cosplay is a combination of costume play, that's how you get the word. I am very focused on the costume part of that. So for me, craftsmanship, building, not necessarily the role-playing part of it, um, which is probably what's led me to be more of a competitive cosplayer. I make the armors and things, but it cosplays for anybody. So um, you can have a whole wide range of reasons for why you join it, what you do with it, and um, how you kind of live it as your hobby. Fair enough. So, so what is Plexi Cosplay doing with it? Uh, Plexi <laughs> Cosplay is doing way too much with it. Um, I am extremely ambitious with it. So whenever I started, I was going to a convention called the Walker Stalker Con, which is no, it doesn't happen anymore, but it was for the Walking Dead show. Okay. And I really wanted to meet Jeffrey Dean Morgan, who's... Um, the guy who has Lucille the bat, he's like the bad guy, right? So I really wanted to meet him and I thought I should dress up as something. And so I picked him, Morton Joe from the Mad Max Fury Road okay. show. Yeah. I love that movie. We actually just went on a uh, a Steel City war town party kind of excursion with a bunch of Mad Max cosplayers just like a few weeks ago. That's how much I love it. But um, so I started w w with that because I wanted to take a photo with him in a cool costume and go to this convention. And then once I was there, and once I made the costume, really, it's it was heavy in the craftsmanship part. It wasn't just like, you know, go to Goodwill and find some stuff. Like, I had to make a pseudo armor, really. Right. And I really liked it. And I liked the way people liked uh, taking pictures with me. I liked the, not the attention necessarily, but just the, like, the community that I felt, the vibe. Well, and the, the joy people get out yeah, of it, Yeah, right? yeah. It was really cool. It was really cool. And, like, people just loved seeing it. And I loved it more because people loved it. Um, and so I just started attending more and I remember, um, I went to Baltimore Comic Con not long thereafter, um, but I wasn't there to compete or like I wasn't into it that much. And I saw the people lined up outside of the competition room where they were getting ready to go on stage. And I was like, that's amazing. Yeah. Like the things they make are amazing. Yeah, they, I couldn't imagine. And it is funny the next year I went and I won the amateur division for it. Nice. So ever since then, I just keep more and more. I just can't. I don't want to stop. I like pushing the boundaries on what you can make, and I like building and innovating and kind of being the forefront there. Well, like, as you just mentioned, I mean, I've seen some of the stuff 
you cosplayers build on, on online and, and some especially some of the mega suits that they're building now, like the yeah. robot. I mean, it's crazy how you guys make these. But that, as I told you <laughs> to get you on the show, I was like, I didn't think I'd meet a cosplayer in Westminster, especially yeah. building the stuff that you have <laughs> built. Um, so very cool to have you. And I guess you explained it a little bit, but I mean, why cosplay? I mean, I, you, of course, the attention and the joy. Yeah. But is there any more to it than that? Yeah. I mean, so I've always think through my professional career and unrelated to cosplay is I've always wanted to do something artistic and I had opened my own bakery for a little while and that did really well but I just couldn't retain the joy um I got really tired of it yeah. uh, and so I ended up quitting but it was very successful very fast and so I always wanted to find a way to turn my artistic skills into something that was that I could stay passionate about and that might make me money one day but really I don't do cosplay for the money because it doesn't make much um I do it because I love it. I love building, and it gives me so many opportunities to learn new things. You don't just yeah. get stuck frosting the same cakes or whatever, you know? Like, it's all different. Well, this is a, a bit of a tangent, but I'm glad you brought it up because, uh, hey, you had a bakery. It was successful, but it, it wasn't for you, right? So, yeah. So I, I, I'm also glad you brought up the, the learning part, too, because I tell everyone, I, video is a fun job, right? Right. But it's a job all the same, so you're gonna have your days where you're like, I don't want to do this. <laughs> so, so was it the w with the bakery? Was it the fact that it's just like I'm doing the same thing day in and day out? Is that what got bad? I, I think it's you can pick something that you think is gonna fit the passions that you have, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's gonna check all the boxes in the end. And sometimes it's not. And I'm a very firm believer, and don't keep doing the same mistake just because you spent a lot of time doing it. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm not just gonna keep doing it because I've spent years and I got really good. At, I had a lot of friends who were like, why would you stop? You're so successful. Like, you're never going to reach the success again. And I'm like, watch, watch me. Like, I, every time I do it, I'll pick up something new and, and try it. So, yeah, yeah I would yeah. encourage anybody, if you think you've checked the boxes on something that you're passionate about and you found something, but you're still not feeling it, you just have that feeling inside that there's something not quite there that you reevaluate and be willing to drop it all and start again. Yeah. Take the risk. I, I will always take, I've been a zookeeper. I have a degree <laughs> in neuroscience. I was, wow. I opened, owned a bakery. I worked for the government. I've, I've done it all. And I, as long as you have a good work ethic and you're willing to give it your all, people are willing to work with you on that. Yeah. I, <laughs> I a hundred percent agree. I, um, We've said multiple times on the show, like you, you don't really need knowledge and and money to be successful. You just need a drive and desire to succeed, right? That's I mean, that's absolutely it. true, and you can apply it to literally. I, I will be the person any job. Yeah, yeah, any job. Yeah, <laughs> very cool. No, I, I, that's great. Because again, you know, some people might be thinking like cosplay. What does this have to do with business or you know? But this whole show is not only about business, but self motivation. So like yeah. learning that hey, I can go do whatever I really set my mind to. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and you can. I think you can really turn anything into a money-making business yeah. if you want to. Yeah. Um, you have to think like a business person, and sometimes people aren't willing to do that with a hobby. But it's if you have the right passionate hobby, it's it's worth giving it a go. Well, and and to that same note, I, you know, a lot of the jobs I used to work for, I would always ask, "Can I work from home?" Before mm -hmm. before that was even a thing. Now everybody works from home. Right. You know. <laughs> um, but they didn't get it. They're like, you know, if you work from home, you won't be working. And it's, I understand that, you know, 80% of the people probably out there can't handle the stress and the stuff of when you work for yourself, you have to keep your, your own motivation, right? You don't yes. have a boss yelling at you. So, you know, I was like, I can handle that. But I, to the, to these people until COVID happens, like they didn't understand that someone could actually go work from home, be constructive, yeah, be responsible for what yeah. they had to do, you know? <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I think that boils down to everything you do in life. If, if you, put the effort in and you, you want to succeed, I think you're going to be fine in the yeah, long run. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I mean, I've worked from home for uh, a long time now, eight years or something, full-time job from home. Everything's from home. Um, and I do it well, and it's just a matter of having your own motivation. And yeah. some people can't do it from home, and that's fine. You, that's good to acknowledge it, but it's possible. Yeah. <laughs> well, and let's give him a, a, a plug real quick. Your husband, Sean, um, it's it's not a pretty typical job, but he's the uh, chief instructor at TriStar Martial Arts, which is pretty cool, right? Correct, yeah. So my full-time job is at TriStar Martial Arts oh, okay. Academy. I am okay. the marketer, and I market all three dojos. So we have locations in Eldersburg, Westminster, Mount Airy. Great. My husband's the chief instructor at the Westminster Dojo, so we okay. kind of, as a team, run that together. Great. Um, but, yeah, it's, and I've been doing that for 
probably close to a decade now. And I started just by doing, I was doing freelance work before then, writing blogs, doing a lot of content creation. Okay. And I slowly picked up into that. And now I am full-time their marketer. And, and I love it. I don't plan to ever stop doing it. Even if I find some, if cosplay makes more than that, I don't want to stop working for yeah. TriStar because I do love it. <laughs> well, great. And so, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, um, you're doing what you love and, and yeah. that's all that matters. So yes. great, 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 great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Well, and it's very cool, too, that um, you and your husband are no stranger to just making it on your own. Because, I mean, running the dojo, I'm sure, is, it has its own headaches and stress and yeah. trying to keep, uh, you know, retention of students. COVID and... was rough. Um, COVID yeah. was rough for everybody. I think if somebody says it wasn't, they're lying to you. Um, you you'd like to put on a nice face for everybody. But it's it's hard to find a balance. You have hundreds of students, and they are from all of the extremes. So you will never please everybody. That's Everybody knows that. But we also have to keep in mind safety. Yeah. We really, we do not want to put anyone into an unsafe position. Right. Um, but we also want them to keep growing. It, staying at home and not participating is, I wouldn't necessarily say unsafe, but I mean, we're in the business of self-defense and safety. So without it, you kind of are. You've lost those protections. So yeah. there's, it's it's balancing a lot, balancing for sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, um let's get back to the cosplay i guess um how, how did you start in cosplay like i know you went to the one event but yeah. um what made you say like hey i could start making more elaborate costumes and actually selling them so some people might recognize it i was um on the internet and buzzfeed is a is a big website and it came up once with kamui cosplay k m u i um she builds these really extravagant things and she has tutorials and books and i was like oh, cool. i want to be like her that's like it just come right after i think i saw those competitors and i'm like i could probably do that she has a book and so i i bought one of her books like foam smithing foam is the primary yeah. thing that i use for most of my stuff and so she would show you a, a bit of the you know how to's and i picked a very ambitious build for my first armor and i just went for it and she followed me like she has millions of followers and it was to be like recognized by somebody that started you and it, it was very motivating cool and then the network of people that i started being able to connect with and the in the you know really extended family it it keeps you it sucks you in and it keeps you going and as a builder somebody who likes to innovate being able to have access to all these new resources and people who are putting out tutorials like yeah. it's just it's addicting and sure. you're doing you're doing your own tutorials now correct i do yeah i have a youtube channel where i try to give people a lot of the basics i do have some like overview builds where i show you front you know beginning to end how i built something but a lot of it's like here's how you work with led strip lights here's how you can do it and it's very simple to get you started because a lot of times it's the starting point that people are really nervous about. Yeah. It's not the end point. Once you start and you get the little things, putting all the little things together is what makes something, you know, yeah. big and amazing. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Um, well, and let's talk about that too, because you said you got to meet all these new people. And I know for me, when I started working for myself, one of the coolest things I found in it was meeting new people, learning new things, uh, getting to, to work, <clears throat> interesting avenues. So what is it about business and why would you recommend other people to just – even if it's not for business, get out of your comfort zone and go meet some new people, learn some new things. Why do you think that's so important? Yeah, it's really easy at a, a work from home job to kind of huddle down in your little office or your cosplay room or whatever, and not talk to anybody. Yeah. <clears throat> um, but you don't get where you are without having learned from somebody else. And whenever you make the connections to a group of new people and teach them something that you've learned, it actually gives like an exponential boost to the top line of what's possible. Yeah. Um, so like I have no problem networking with like, if it's my job, networking with competitors, being friendly, seeing where they're at, like sharing knowledge, supporting each other. I, it, we will all succeed. Like it's just, it's yeah. trying to dim someone else's candle. Doesn't, you know, whatever that phrase is, it, it just doesn't, it doesn't make your light brighter. And that's true. It's true. It's, it's true, true with cosplay as well. Yeah. And with cosplay, especially like I started reaching out to paint companies. Deco art is a paint company like Plaid FX. And they're a big one that you see at all the craft stores. And I would tag them and reach out. And, and I also supported the people who worked for the other companies like Plaid FX at the same time, because if we can between all of these competitive companies make a paint that's better for cosplay, it helps us all get better. Right. Like we've all achieved something and I don't care who makes it. I just care that it's made. Right. So it's, you know, it's a bit of a selfish end result too, but it's, it's also what brings the joy to be able to, a lot of people feel I think weird about supporting somebody else because they want 
people to constantly support them. Yeah. But I swear to you, one of the best feelings is to go through and just start on people's posts, commenting everywhere how great they are. It's such a good feeling. Yeah, I love well, it. Well, I run into that <clears throat> a lot with video in my quote-unquote competition is yeah. a lot of the guys you run into are just, you know, oh, you do what I do. Which, uh, that's not my approach. I, I, I hear you do video. It's like, oh, cool. Yeah. I, I want to hear you. I'm going to see where you're at and what you're doing. And that's, you know, because uh, the other thing I try to tell these people that are, you know, off-putting to someone, it's like, you don't know when that person could help you out. Mm -hmm. uh, know something, as you just mentioned, that you don't know. That mm -hmm. you, you know, so yeah, I, I try to keep the same mindset as well. It's like, I don't care if you do what I do. Yeah. I, are you a good person? Can we talk to one another? And at the end of the day, that's all. I, I mean, actually, one of my best friends is a, a fellow video guy that has the same mentality. Yeah. And, you know, and it, as I just mentioned, we call each other for shoots, and it's, it's a good, reliable source, and so. Yeah, I've referred people to competition, whether it's my regular job or, co like, I've just the other day, I had somebody ask me for a quote to commission on some wings that I could have easily made, but I said, I saw this other person who's already done them, and they've done an extremely good job, and it, I know this might sound weird, but I'd like to refer you to them because yeah. they're just excellent. They yeah. are. And I've done the same thing with martial arts, too. If someone's asking for a certain style, and I'm like, oh, this doesn't quite fit what we're doing. But very smart. if you're like really into grappling or wrestling, I totally know a place for you down the road that's good for that. Well, and two things, <clears throat> that person you referred that person to is now going to go, wow, that person had my back. Maybe yeah. if something pops up in the future, I'll refer them. So that's yeah. off the bat, very good there. It's a better world that way, really. It is. It just is. Yeah. It's so much nicer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, and that's the sense of community, which again, a part of this reason for this show is during COVID, community was completely shattered and lost. So, um, you know, the show was again was to mention like, hey, look at the cool people we have in our county that are right at your back door that are mm -hmm. doing wonderful things here that want to bring community back. And so, yeah, you know, I love Westminster. Like, yeah. and I get a lot of people do not. A lot of people are kind of like, uh, there's this or there's that or whatever. Like, I have a real sense of love for the city of Westminster, all the parts of it. It could be better in some ways, and I think I'm an integral part of that. That's why I used to make things for the peep show at, at the Arts Center. Yeah. Like, uh, the big bell the from Beauty and the Beast, like, all of those bigger ones were from me. Awesome. And it's because I love the attention that it brings to the community. I love the money that it brings to the Arts Center. Yeah. And um, I just... I do. I have a very big sense of loyalty and love for everybody in and around Westminster. Well, no, I'm glad you brought it up. And well, we even branched it out for a little, you know, Carroll County in general. Um, yeah. Because I'm glad you brought it up. Yeah. You go outside of Carroll, it's like, uh, Carroll, mm -hmm. you know, the farmer, yeah. farmer hicks that do nothing. And another reason for the show, it's like, no, there's some pretty cool stuff going on here. We offer like, so much, <laughs> yeah. so much. Like the yeah. main streets, no matter if it's Sykesville or Westminster, or Mount Airy, like, there are so many cool people and really great mindsets and um, just a lot of opportunity for, for something great in our county. Yeah, yeah, yeah. especially if you uh, if you have the right mindset to go look for it and ask yes. for the right help. It, it is out there. Nobody, that's the weird part is and because I, um, at the beginning of COVID, I was in the paper a few times for making masks for um, the nurses in the hospitals yeah. and stuff. It was like I was one of the first ones and I've had people ask me about it and like, what, why, why did you do it? What made you do it? And as an adult, I've realized that there's never a time someone's going to come ask you, hey, come make this better. Yep. Come do this thing. But like it, it doesn't happen. If, if you're waiting for that, it just won't happen. Yeah. You have to be willing to do it. And the weird part is a lot of times when you do, like you might be one of the only ones, like same with like the peep show, like no one's going to ask you to build something. But if you build it and you bring it, you get to join a really great community. Yeah. And so you just have to, you have to think of the ideas and be willing to go for it. Like just all in, yeah. all in, yeah. take the risk. <laughs> it's true. I mean, well, because nothing, I mean, Eiffel Tower, you name any landmark, none of it ever existed. And it was initially just a thought in someone's mind, right? Right, yep. And it was that person saying, no, I want to make this happen. It's the only reason anything exists in our world. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, and just be willing to do it. Like, don't don't be scared. You, I I get that it's it, that's a very big mindset change for a lot of people yeah, to is. just suddenly do their own thing instead of waiting for somebody to ask them to do it. Uh, the show, prime example, I, I asked for permission over and over again to do this show from people nope. and ask for money. Just and do it. <laughs> after the final meeting with uh, some certain people, I had had enough, and the next yeah. day I had 10 people scheduled. Yeah, and here there we you are. go. That's all you have to do. <laughs> and, well, yeah, and I, well, I, I've, I've realized, apply that to all aspects of life. Just yes. shut up and do it, because yes. it's the only way it's ever going to happen. It's true. Very yeah. true. Um. You know, say so we talked about Carol, which is good because uh, that was the other good thing about the show too. Is we wanted to highlight again why Carol's so great. Um, so, how do you make money doing cosplay? Sure. Um, 
there's a lot of different ways people can make money. I make, I, I could make a salary doing cosplay. I could easily do that right now. Um, but there's some things that I'm not willing to do in order to make that salary. So I can do commission pieces. People know what my work looks like. They, they want more of it and they would pay a lot of money for it. Yeah. But you're making something for somebody else and I wouldn't get to explore a lot of my creative avenues for myself that I'd like to. So I found a happy medium where I'm selling things on Etsy. I pick, I do a lot of resin printing. Um, for other cosplayers, they might not have a resin printer available. Mm. You can make little items, sell them at conventions, sell them on Etsy. Um, I make some money if I win some competitions. Like that's a really big driver for yeah. me to enter the big ones sometimes is how much money could I make at it? Um, it'll cover the cost of what you've done. I also like to sell my old costumes because then it will help me fund the future ones. And, and are they on Etsy as well? Those ones I just usually put up on my – like they're gone in a day. Oh, okay. Like they're up and gone. Um but one of the biggest ways I've found is networking and tagging the companies whose products I already use. So if I the, I got connected with DecoArt because I said, hey, this is the costume I made. I posted it. And then I tagged DecoArt. And mm -hmm. then they reached out to me and said, would you like to do more? Soon I'm going to have um, – you're going to – if you go to Hobby Lobby, it's going to be the first one. Oh, cool. And they have a paint kit. Well, they have several paint kits. And my work is what's on the outside of the paint kits that I've done for them. So these new paints that I've that I've worked with. Very and cool. we've helped develop these paints for cosplay. And it will be on the shelves. You will be able to physically hold something Very cool. that I made. And I'm part of a book publishing deal right now that I'm making for cosplayers to um, show people how to use different materials in their costumes. Great. But definitely always, like, tagging showing people if you're already using their stuff to show them what you've made and a lot of businesses are impressed with that and they want you to do more um yeah. and that's that's covered i have my foam is paid for by a company they just send it to me Great. so i don't have to pay for my materials most of the time be cool if um casting materials like uh resins and rubbers were paid for but i haven't quite got there yet but you will. I, I spend a lot of money on that yeah you'll, you'll get there though you know all in due time right yeah right um <laughs> so my brain keeps just like it's, I know this is a really weird one, so it's easy to be like in five different spots. <laughs> well, I'm trying to think um, you, what you were just talking about. Um, so is for you, though, especially with cosplay, money's not the only outcome, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, a lot of people and you should never go into this being like, I'm just going to make some money at cosplay. Well, well and we've brought it up before. You don't you shouldn't go into anything where money is your only motivation. Yeah, right. I mean, you could. Do some, you could start something for money and make money at it, uh, whatever. I mean, that's what any job is. Go work at a right. restaurant or whatever you want to do and make some money. Easy, right. easy. Um, but if you want this to, like for me, I wanted to invest more time in my hobby. And so to do that, I wanted to be able to pay for more of my materials on my own, separate yeah. from my full-time job. My full-time job helps me pay for my house, my kids, my everything else. But I wanted to kind of be self-sustaining in my hobby. Yeah. So it started off that way, and I just kind of worked my way into it. Okay. But, yeah. Um, I was going to say, where are you headed with this is what I wrote down. I'm trying to think of where <laughs> I was headed with that question. Right. <laughs> well, I mean, I can tell you I'm still going to compete. Uh, this year I have a few cons that are coming up that I'm going to be a part of for um, some different companies uh uocc is one that i i was a finalist in and i won the judge's choice that's the ultimate online comp cosplay competition and okay. we're going to have some booths at different conventions coming up in dallas and one in florida that i'll help do panels and workshops and so i'm going to kind of take a step back from the competition for the rest of this year like after this last one i said i need a break competition is extremely stressful for i'm me. sure yeah. extremely um but i plan to start again next year and the Whenever you compete, you get put into a room of these high-level, amazing artists for the entire day. And it's like, it's unreal the connections that you can make in that, that green room. And so I'm, I'm going to get back into it for sure. Good. Um, but until then, I'm going to make some more costumes, get kind of, you know, settled, work with some companies, which I haven't done before. Um, my biggest, I, I would say, swing in friends, networking, everything has happened since covid Okay. So I didn't actually have friends before whenever I went to conventions. I went by myself or my husband would come with me. And now I have tons of people. So it's going to be a whole new experience that yeah. I haven't done yet. So I'd like to give that a chance before I get right back into competing. Yeah, <laughs> good, good, good. Um, no, I, I, I'm all over the place again. Um, I had a question and then yet again my I'm brain so just sorry. went. No, it's okay. <laughs> I, I, I'm more I, – I need to get focused here. Um, well, let's talk about this since I wrote that down. Yeah. Likes don't pay, right? So, I mean, just because you're getting likes on on 
it's I think what people need to understand it's the collaborations with the companies, right? Yes. That's what pays. It's not Correct. someone liking your stuff. It's right. it's finding that company that likes what you're doing and is willing to pay you to do a, a, right. a promotion with them. Correct. So likes can help. Um, obviously, you don't get paid for somebody to like your thing, but the more likes, shares, engagement that you get on something, the more well known you are, and the more likely a company is to invest in you. Okay. So if you're looking to do it for a business, it does it does matter, and it does matter to stay on trends. Like I've started a TikTok recently. And I am not of that age range, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, those my videos seem to gain a lot of attention on Instagram already. So I knew that I needed to probably venture into a video platform, yeah. and TikTok's the way to go. So the more engagement I can get, the more likely a company is to say, "Hey, that's probably a person who could um, benefit our business because right. she is a leader in the community. She does tutorials. She does this or that. Like it, it, it does matter in a way." Um, but don't expect it to happen overnight and don't yeah, think yeah. about just what you'd like to post. Think about what people want to see. Um, like when you're when you're looking through TikTok or Instagram, what do, what makes you stop? What makes you look and then kind of reframe that post to be something that's yours? Yeah, smart. Well, we're going to get into social media and uh, becoming an expert. I do have to thank my sponsor real quick. So... Our sponsor for season two, as you all know so far, is Target Community and Educational Services. Target is a client of mine, and I've been a fan of theirs for many years, and we can't thank them enough for their support, and more importantly, their belief in us and what we're trying to accomplish here. Uh, Target Community and Educational Services is a nonprofit in Carroll County striving to enhance the lives of people with disabilities. And through their Human Services graduate program at McDaniel College, you too can have the life-changing experience of working with these amazing people while getting your master's basically for free. Uh, find out more about their graduate program at mcdaniel.edu or Target's website, targetcommunity.org. While you're there, think about donating directly to Target Community and help enhance the lives of people with disabilities. Also, thank you uh, to my mug and T-shirt sponsor, Maryland Print House. Guys, thank you very much for the care package you sent. It was uh, insane. I have uh, We usually just get T-shirts, but we had mugs, T-shirts, I mean, hats, you name it from these guys. So thank you very much. Um, be sure to check out Maryland Print House for all of your printing needs. I'm pretty sure they print on anything. Um, <laughs> but uh, that is that for our sponsor. So back to us now, though. Uh, let's talk about social media because I know we talked about it before we hit record. It's a love-hate with social media, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, and actually, let me, before I get into that, because of your sponsor, it made me think mm -hmm. of this, um, disabilities. And so I will get to the social media part, but yeah, it's yeah. really important to know that Anybody can do cosplay. It yeah. doesn't matter if you have a disability. I've had people ask, like, if I'm wearing a catheter or if I'm wearing something else, will they dock me points if I'm competing? And the community does not. They That, that is not an acceptable thing. It's like, just you about are, the build. It, yeah, you build, and if you can't wear contacts and you have to wear glasses, it does not. it's not going to affect any points in competition because good. you need that. It's a health thing. And so cosplay is really good for... Not only physical disabilities, but people who have maybe some mental disabilities. Say you have, um, like, I don't know, an anxiety disorder or um, autism or something that maybe is hard for you to connect with people. Cosplay community is really good at kind of enveloping those people, give you the space you need, but also you well, can be free to be yourself. Well, and also, I mean, I, I think that costume would provide a little bit of you can be someone else at that time, right? It's There's so many people who really come out of their shell Good. Getting to don a costume and go to a convention and just geek out. Like, it's a really great place for the, for anybody. Well, no, I'm glad you brought that up. Now, are you familiar with Target? The, the, no, 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 I'm not. So, yeah, um, so they, they, they um, offer job training and stuff for, to adults with disabilities. They yeah. uh, For some of them, they provide housing. Um, so it's a really great cause. So I'm, I'm glad you brought it up that how inclusive the cosplay community is. Yes. Because... Um, I think one thing I've learned with dealing with Target and the ARC, um, a lot of their clients just want to live a, a life like everyone else, right? They right. just want to go do normal things. So yes. um, if cosplay is something they can get into, I think that's great. Oh, my goodness. And they everything's always very accessible in a convention. They, they always keep those things in mind, people with wheelchairs or whatever kind of disability you might have. We want to make sure that everyone gets to be included, and it includes representation. Um, so not only disabilities, but somebody in a minority community – like we want that we yeah. want the rep we want everybody to come in and experience like just the happiness that we get from being able to wear a costume and show off and be with our friends and stuff and yeah. so i i really take pride in cosplay in that community just just accepting so many people yeah. and we we will make the accommodations we will great i was gonna say i think one of my favorite cosplays is the dad built 
one of the walkers from Alien, or mm-hmm. and the, 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 his it's daughter so cool. can climb in. And, it's yeah. so cool. I love it. I love it. Um, well, yeah. th- that's what I appreciate about cosplay: the the ingenuity, the creativity behind it. I mean, mm-hmm. it's not like you're just like, oh, I'm going to make this. I mean, you have to. It's a serious thought. And I find that a lot of people with different disabilities that maybe aren't physical are a lot of times very artistic and it's the way that you can express yourself if you can't express it verbally or you can't express it you know just because you you don't have the ability to be able to get that through to somebody else you can a lot of times express it through your art yeah and wearing your art yeah um so it's just it's such a great outlet and it's i yeah i just love it (laughs) well we just interviewed um I might get to the Institute for Arts Integration and STEAM. Um, so they're they're uh, advocates for getting arts into every class. Yeah. Math, science, everything. And and we talked. It's like you know, arts are always coming under fire as being quote unquote unimportant and all this. And my point to them was, if you think arts are unemployment, then put down your iPhone, put down your computer, mm-hmm. put down your car, put down. I mean, yes. stop using everything because it was all designed by an artist. It's true. Yeah. Everything. I mean, even the plastic containers that your strawberries come in is yeah. art had to 3d model you know how that was going to be like yeah. everything is i do 3d modeling i do it for my costumes but you could very easily do it for something else that somebody would be like oh that's a more practical use of that yeah. um which also brings me to the point a lot of times you'll get people who really just want to tear cosplayers down and their thing is why don't you you're so talented why don't you use those talents for something useful um and it's this is useful for me and my happiness. Right. It's useful to the community. And it's, it brings joy to other people. It brings joy. Everyone has a hobby. And I'm sure that person could be very useful if they went to school and learned something as well. But instead, they're on the Internet trolling people. Right, so, yeah. yeah, you just you pick and choose. And, and it's just this is very useful to me. Good. So. Good, good, good. Well, let's let's talk about the lovely social media. Yes. though, Because <laughs> I, as I told you before we hit record, I. I can't stand social media, but at the same token, I'm I, I'm not stupid. I realize I wouldn't be able to do this without social media. I wouldn't be able to market cheaply and then yeah. effectively without social media. So, uh, what do you see the balance being? You know, it's it's the it's the great communication tool. Like you can't meet everybody in person nowadays. You right. just can't. Yeah. And I wouldn't be able to make the things that I've made without social media because that's how I've found people. It's how I've found their tutorials. That's how I've learned things that yeah. I wouldn't have been able to look at at a book. There's just not books like that around. So we have to use each other and what we're able to learn through social media, through their posts. Like, oh, that did work really great. I want to use that in my thing now. Yeah. Um, and it goes for really any business is that you only get better if you're really good at connecting with people. And social media gives such a wider net of people you can connect with. True. And so it's it's extremely useful. It can be difficult with algorithms. Yeah. Um, it can be difficult to find what people want, but you have to think about uh, if you're a really good business person, you think about how the customer's looking, not what you think the customer wants. Right. So, um, it's for me extremely useful it's given me a lot of opportunities um and it's connected me with people that i would never have met otherwise well i think it's also useful for if if you use it right presenting yourself yeah so that other people might be interested in doing work with you or meeting you you know it's it's, yes uh, because you see a lot of these people it's like it's a, especially on stuff like LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so here's a picture of my dog. It's like, this is a professional platform. What are you doing right, with a picture of yeah. your dog? Like, how does this help you? you, you yeah, you, know? you have to have some sort of a working knowledge of what platforms are good where. Yeah. Like, I barely, I think I have a LinkedIn profile, but I don't really use it because I'm not, A, it's looking not for a new is. job. I'm not trying to yeah. connect in that way to big businesses. It's just not my jam. Um, the way, what people, especially for cosplay, what businesses want to see is my art and those are through photos and the biggest photo platform is going to be Instagram or Pinterest and videos, which will be Instagram or TikTok. Yeah. So I need to use those if I want to connect with the businesses. That's where they're well, looking. Well, and also YouTube because you have a YouTube channel, right? I do have a YouTube channel yeah. and that's honestly the YouTube channel. It kind of gives me some credibility for the companies, but it also just, YouTube doesn't pay me yet. I'm not partnered. I have right. several hundred people or whatever but um it's not for the money it's just for spreading the knowledge because i had to learn from other people and i want to be able to teach people what i know too so yeah. it's it's just another layer like you want to have your fingers kind of everywhere yeah whenever you're doing something if you want to make it i don't know profitable 
And well, and, and as, as much as I despise social media, I think it's highly intelligent what Facebook is doing now with the creator studio and all that. I mean, mm-hmm. I look at that and it's like, this is basically YouTube, but with the searchability of Instagram and Facebook, shareability of it, it's genius in my opinion. Yeah. Um, so I, 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 unfortunately, I don't see this stuff going anywhere anytime yeah. <laughs> soon. It's, it's actually the future. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think the more people get on top of it and learn it now, the better off they are. And more importantly, I, I know it's what I do, but video. Yeah, video is the key right now. Video is everything. I mean, when you're scrolling, what, what makes you stop? It's usually video. Yeah. Like sometimes a picture and you might give it a like and then keep scrolling. But video is what keeps people engaged. They yeah. want to learn more. Yeah. So video is the way. Well, and we bring it up a lot too. That video, what it affords you is people don't buy products anymore. They buy people. Yes. Right? Like, yeah. like people might like your costumes that you're building, but they like that it's you that's building them, right? They do. Yeah, yeah they do. I mean, they're... I first get the attention through the wildness of the costumes that I make, but I keep people around through how I'm teaching what I made. And then I wouldn't necessarily say my personality, but I mean, apparently that's that's a big part of it. People have to like who you are too. They yeah. like the way I talk, how I don't talk down. If, if I'm teaching you something, I'm not there to like, you know, pat your head and make you feel better. Like we're working in it together and I just happen to know right. how, how this is supposed to go. Well, and, and so let's talk about that then real quick. So. Becoming an expert, I think it's important nowadays. You have to kind of pick your little area that you're an expert in. Now, it doesn't mean there won't be other people like, hey, I'm a video expert, right? Mm-hmm. But yeah. but again, people are buying you. They're not necessarily buying that your fact that you're a video expert. So it's it's how how is your approach to it mm-hmm. going to be beneficial to whoever it is you're selling to? Right? Correct. Yeah, I, I would agree. And whether or not it's cosplay or martial arts, people want to know that I have – I've heard a lot of people say that my positivity is very motivational for them. Um, even though I've had terrible, yesterday was, I can't tell you, no, it was two days ago. I've never had so many failures packed into a single day <laughs> as I've had that day. It was one failure after another. And at the end, I, I did make a post about it, uh, just like a story that said, I have never had this many failures, um, but failure is what makes me successful. And Well, I was, I was just about to ask you, how much did you learn that day? I learned that it's expensive to fail. No, I knew that <laughs> ahead of time. I knew that ahead of time. Um, but I it definitely, it makes you go slow. Like, you'll never forget that. Well, I'll never forget to put an ease release on a mold again. I'll so you never, learned that, yeah. I'll never forget that if you squeeze in the middle of an E600 bottle of glue, that sometimes it might explode out the back onto your foot. Like, just stupid little things but <laughs> it's things that you can forget when you're really deeply in something and it's yeah. the same with um my job as a martial so as a marketer like people the way that they perceive our dojo without having walked into is is completely on me and yeah. i say po- i never i will never tear down another dojo because there is no reason to yep. we're all working together all we want to do is bring self-defense and safety to kids and i i like to be even through covid when things were rough i'm like these kids are learning confidence. They're learning perseverance. They're learning things through this whole yeah. situation. Like staying positive is so impactful to your business, no matter what it is. And I think that's whenever people buy buy into the business, whether they come in to train at martial arts or whether they want to purchase a crown that I yeah. made, they do it because they like the person who did it. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. No, I, I think it's very important. Um, you know, <laughs> I'm sorry, this happens every show. Because um, <laughs> you were talking about um, the martial arts. Um, anyway. It's rough. I feel like yeah. you like have an idea. As I'm talking, you're like, I have this question. And then as soon as I'm done, you're like, I have gone, five, Well, my gone. problem is I have five questions. I try to write yes, them down. And then it's I'm like, so I don't know sorry. what I'm Because I, I also talk for an extended period no, of you're time. You're good. You're good. You're good. You're good. Um, but but let's, uh, let's talk about the, um, the, the expert part again. Because, you know, it's, I had to figure this out when I first started on my own. As we talked about, like, my wife was like, well, you have to go network. Okay, I'm networking, but no one's calling me back. And the, what I eventually found was you have to build, like you mentioned, you have to build a relationship with people, right? You do. If yeah. they don't know you, they're not going to call you. Right. So I think that's what plays into the being an expert, though, is if you go out and you start presenting yourself as someone that knows what's going on, people are naturally going to gravitate that. Because I would think, you know, so if I were to go do a, a video tutorials on, on how I do, People gravitate to that, I would think, because who else is showing you that stuff, right? And if you yep. need it in your business, you're now that you're going to think of that person all the time. So, um, have you have you done that? Obviously, you're doing it with cosplay, but have you done that with any of your other? I mean, even for the academy, or yeah, I mean, just and I think being an expert doesn't mean that you don't fail. It's 
being able to learn from your failures, failures, but also being super approachable. There is not yeah. a question I won't answer for anybody. I'm not like, oh, just wait and come in and I'll tell you that answer. Oh, yeah. just buy my thing and I'll tell you that. Like, I am an open source person. Everything I'm willing to be open about. And I think that brings a little bit of humility to it and people relate more. I I have seen people attempt this and instead they just turn into a bucket of negativity because it's easy to only tell people all the negatives. Right. You mostly, like when you think of the people that you follow on Facebook or Instagram or whatever and the people that you engage with the most or the people that you find yourself stopping and looking at the most, think about their qualities. Do they like, are they negative very right. often? Probably not. They're usually extremely positive people. Yep. Um, and they're also motivating in their ambitions. They're, they don't stop. I don't, there's very rarely a time where I get to stop and watch TV. I constantly am doing something. Yeah, yeah. People are drawn to that. So I think it's, you don't necessarily have to be the best at some, I'm not the best martial artist. I have a black belt. It means I can maybe defend myself sometimes, but I am certainly not the best martial artist. I right. don't know all of the different things, right. um, but I'm approachable. I will teach you what I know, and I will do it safely, and um, I will do it in a friendly manner where you feel like you're included rather than just being talked down to. No, so. that's. I'm glad you brought that up because I've been told by several clients, like, look, there's other people that do what you do, but we can actually talk and deal with you. Yes, where we don't like this. Communication is so important. Well, and I, as I tell most of my clients, like, and I'm sure they've dealt with this. Okay, we need a video. That person goes, "Great, here's the price. This is what it is." You know, my first question is, "Why do you want a video?" Right. Yeah. Why is this important to you? What do you hope to accomplish out of this? Yep. Because if it doesn't align with what I do, then I'm not yes. the person you need to be talking to, right? Yep. I agree. I um, agree. Yeah. So, it, well, and that's also, I mean, you said a little bit like you don't want to do custom builds for people, and I'm assuming it's a little bit of the video line of. How do you explain what isn't visible and physical yet? How do you explain what it's going to look like, right? Right. And you have to try to get into someone else's mind and know exactly what they're thinking and what they're picturing. Right. And that's extremely difficult to do. I could do it, but the amount of money it would cost for me to do some of these things people ask for is astronomical. Yeah. Whenever I can make something that has been proven to be successful, you can see it. Like I've printed out the crowns, Lady Loki from the new series. And right. People have seen it. I made a little cosplay about it, a video to kind of promote it. You know exactly what you're getting. We're on the same page because we both saw the same thing. Yeah. And that is low anxiety with a good return for me. Yeah. So I like doing those things, and instead I keep my big builds for me. I like to push the boundaries. And then the way that I give give to you is that I'm going to show you how I did it, so maybe you can do it on your own. Right, Yeah, right. I won't have to do it for you. <laughs> right. Yeah, I just, I, I again, you know, I, I know from the – the, hey, this doesn't exist yet, communication's key then at that point, oh, yeah. right? Like it's if, so important. If, if we can't talk to each other about what we're trying to accomplish here, then it's probably not going to happen, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yep, I agree. And a lot of people, I don't, I don't understand how this happens, but they're willing to let communication fall yeah. and just hope for the best outcome. And um, I just, I, I don't understand that mindset. I don't understand how you can not feel anxiety not knowing where the other person is. Right. Um, so, yeah, as a successful business person, I, I would say communication. <laughs> it's it's pretty much well communication it's, and etiquette. Yeah, yeah. Being polite and kind to other people. Um, and yeah, and I, I mean even back to your other point of like the trolls and the people, the negativity on the internet. It's like that is only detrimental to that person, which they don't realize. It's yeah. only detrimental to you. Yeah, I, I just don't. It it doesn't bother me. Like it's not a. It's not my focus. It's not the yeah. people that I'm catering to. I have to put it on social media, and that goes out to literally anyone in the world who wants to see it. <laughs> right. So it's going to be people who have no idea why I would build the things I build or right. what the purpose is or how influential and impactful it can be to uh, other people who well, are in the community. Well, let me ask you that then because I'm, I'm, I would hate to be a kid nowadays with it's social media. It, it, it sounds horrible to me. So <clears throat> how how do you eventually learn and get over the trolls and the negativity and the stupidity that goes on. Like, how, how do you teach your kids to like, well, I mean, I guess they're still young, so maybe they're not on it yet. But I mean, but how, how even, even for kids in middle school or high school now, like, how do you teach them? And none of this stuff matters when you get the negativity and stuff. Like, let it go. They're going to feel it. They're going to feel it. Um, for me, I am very focused on setting boundaries. Know what your boundaries are and stick to them. So um, say the kids are out together playing and another kid comes over and says something to not them but maybe their friend if that's a boundary for them like hey like they said that kid is has a stupid haircut or they're going to slap them if they do that that to them is triggers a boundary in them and even if it's not directed at them they will isolate you don't play with that kid for a bit like they they take action whenever their boundaries 
are crossed. Right. Um, and so being very clear with your kids about what the boundaries are, what's appropriate, what makes you feel bad, what makes you feel embarrassed. If that's a boundary for you, hold to recognize what that is. We work on it because right. at first they'll, they'll get hurt and then you have to discuss like what, what, what made you upset, what happened. That's a boundary for you. If this happens again, that is unacceptable. Here's what you need to do. Right. Um, I was going to say, because there's the second step. How do you handle it then? Yeah, how exactly. Do you re- how do you, more so importantly, how do you react? Usually you get yeah. burned once. And then the next time you try to apply the steps, even through the hurt, what what would you have done next? What did we discuss what happened next? We don't play with that for the rest of the day, no matter what they say. We do this. We do that. Um, and for the internet, it's like, I remember I would get hurt and it would, I would maybe step back for a bit and kind of feel stupid about it and stuff. But the really cool part about the cosplay community is that the network of people around me, the people I've chosen to surround myself with and put in my circle support me. And it's really, whenever you surround yourself with people who are there to support you, instead of competing with everybody, you find that it's easier to bounce back and rebound from from the hard times. So that's, I guess, another benefit to the networking and being positive is that you have a circle of support. Well, and I would also think for the trolls too, it's this is probably the most difficult thing to do, but reaching out and offering compassion to that person because obviously there's a reason you're acting like that and and and, yeah. and lashing out at people. There's deeper seated issues there. So, yeah, some so some. sometimes I did. I remember whenever I was first starting, somebody had done something like that, and I decided to offer compassion and reach out, and it went fine. Um, but a lot of times they're even not necessarily looking for that. They're looking yeah. for any reaction, reaction. Yeah. anything. <clears throat> and as long as you give them something, even if it's compassion, they still feel like they've won. It wasn't, they actually don't yeah. care. Right, right. The thing that they said actually doesn't matter. I've been called um, fat Loki. I'm the one of the few things that I'm so certain that I am is not fat. <laughs> and that's fine. I don't care about body weight, but they pick a thing that has is clearly has nothing to do with me right so you know that it what they're saying is actually not about you in any way yeah they just wanted to say something and they picked the lowest hanging fruit because that's what they think is important to women which is not yeah so um it's better just to ignore it it i just i ignore it i block it i don't care it's just not a thing and like i said if it really impacts you you they've probably picked a low-hanging fruit that unfortunately that that one got you and just realize that that's all they did they just grasped at the first thing that they thought would would have the most impact well and and they're just there to cause trouble and that's it it's it's unreal i've i've been called many things and i just don't care yeah Um, well what's the point what what benefit does it add to your life yeah Yeah. it's it's just it's funny just because it becomes very obvious when it's something that you clearly know does not align with the person you are and you're like Oh, right. Okay. This, that was not actually about me. That that one had nothing to do about me, even though they said it to me. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And then you got your community back and you up anyway. And you, yeah, they're like, just, just move. Like I would, uh, we have little groups on Facebook and stuff. I'm like, look, I just called this and whatever. And, and they're like, I can't even, I don't even know your costume's great. (laughs) And I'm like, I just, I just want people to know that it's, they absolutely don't pick something that has anything to do with you Yeah. when they pick something out. It's, it's just the cause problem. Whatever they can think yeah. is going to make the biggest impact. Yeah. So. so best to let it go and ignore it. Yep. Um, well, so I, you, you don't have a store or anything, but um, where can, let's start with this. Where can people find uh, you and your husband's um, martial arts center? Okay. So in Westminster, we're on um, 130 Airport Drive, which is across from a Jiffy Mart. It's yeah. a, it's a, its own big location. Um, here in Westminster, there's also one in Eldersburg and one in Mount Airy. It used to be the little restaurant there at the airport. Yeah, right? I think there was a um, a lodge something. or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and okay. they gutted it completely out, and so now it's got it's huge. It's I really like the space. It's really nice. Great. It's got a lot of parking, and it's on its own. Okay, so. so if you need martial arts, head there. Yeah. Now, uh, where if people are looking for some cosplay stuff? Yeah, so I have a website, plexicosplay.com. You can always reach out to me on there if you have. I don't do full armor commissions, but I'll sometimes pick up props here and there. I have an Etsy store. Just look up Plexi Cosplay, and I sell a bunch of resin printed things, uh, um, some actual prints that I can sign of my costume pieces, um, or reach out to me on Instagram. I I respond to every message. Great. So unless Great. it's something awful. That's awesome. No, I actually um, <laughs> uh, there's a uh, celebrity I follow that actually responded to me, and it was like, wow. I, people are shocked, but a lot of a lot of people don't reply, and I don't understand why. Like I why love even? the connection point, so I. I, yeah, I will reply. I try it as much as I can. Great, so. great. And then some of the masks you showed us before we hit start were the, the new Scorpion mask, right? Yeah, yeah. So Scorpion, I was telling you before, but I'll tell everyone else, I, 
I have been obsessed with scorpions since I was a little girl, like little, little, which is probably why I'm in martial arts. It's probably why I'm really into cosplay too. Yeah. Like I just love scorpions. So I'm making the new Mortal Kombat movie. I'm making his entire outfit, but I'm also casting it. So instead of it being a hard armor, I'm casting it so it's durable and flexible so that I can get nice. hit or something get thrown at me and it will still hold up. So it's very yeah. cool. Yeah, very it's cool. cool. Well, actually, before we leave here, because in our initial phone call, you had said this. What's the ultimate goal for the cosplay, though? Right, the 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 company that you wanted to yeah, or you I, wanted to yes, be a video game. Yeah, for? I yeah. So uh, a good dream would be that a video game company would reach out. Um, and I've had some here and there, but a video game company would reach out and say, "We have this character. We would like you to build the costume for it. I would wear it." because that would be the best uh, yeah. scenario. And we want to fly you out to do like conventions or appearances or yeah. E3 or something like that to show off the new game and, and promote it. Um, that, that'd be pretty cool. Cool. Well, if there's any video game companies out there, here's your girl. Uh, be Hit sure to up. give her a call. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm sure it'd be awesome. So, uh, well, Candace, thank you so much for your time today. Yes. Yeah, we appreciate you having Thanks. us in your house. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, this may be the last on-location shoot we do. We think the rest of these might be from our house, so thank you for having us. Yeah, of course. Um, and uh, for all of you listening out there uh, and watching today, please be sure to uh, like, uh, share, leave a five-star rating. Uh, of course, you can donate to our calls right on our page at aroundtowncc.com. Uh, be sure to take care, be good to one another, and uh, we're going to see you next episode on Around Town. <laughs> <laughs>